The state of Washington is facing a $4.6 billion shortfall, and education isn't immune to significant cuts that will impact students, staff, and communities. At the federal level, districts no longer receive federal stimulus dollars, which have helped financially strapped districts survive the past two years and will not be helped by EduJobs funding. State support for education is being diminished greatly in the current year and through the next two-year funding cycle. While the state's paramount duty is to provide full funding for education, less than 70% of a school district's budget is covered by the state, leaving basic programs and services at risk of being reduced or eliminated. Some of those are K-4 class size enhancement. Washington State school districts already lost millions of dollars that paid for teaching positions to help keep class sizes down in the early grades. Class size averages are expected to jump from 22 students to 26 or 27 per classroom without state support for extra teachers. The state also may cut support for summer vocational education and programs that serve highly capable students. In addition, one of the most inequitable proposals being considered by state legislators is the reduction or elimination of levy equalization, which helps level the playing field for all public schools in Washington. What is levy equalization? To answer that question, first let's explain levies and why they're needed. Schools do not receive enough money from the state to provide basic education to its students. Basic education is supposed to include reasonable class sizes, adequate personnel, classroom supplies and materials, facilities and technology, student transportation, and programs such as music and art. School districts, however, are not allocated enough funding by the state to provide the needed programs and services. To help make up the difference, school districts must ask voters to approve local levies, which pay for basic programs and services not fully funded by the state or federal government. The amount of money a school district can raise from a local levy is based on property value in the school district service area and the ability of local property owners to pay the levy rates. In a community such as Seattle, the total personal and industry property value is high when compared to a community such as Vancouver. As a result, the tax impact of raising $1 for a school levy is higher in Vancouver than it is in Seattle. Our taxpayers are paying $3.55, $3.65 a thousand to support that levy, where to pass the same size levy in Bellevue, their taxpayers may be paying 65 or 70 cents a thousand, simply because Microsoft is paying the rest of that bill. Meet Clay and Ashley. Clay lives in Seattle, in a property-rich district with the ability to collect taxes from major businesses. Ashley is from Vancouver. She lives in a district that doesn't have a high tax base like Seattle. Although both students live in the state of Washington and attend their local public school, they will not receive the same educational benefit if legislation passes to reduce or eliminate levy equalization. Since Clay's parents happen to live in Seattle, Clay has a smaller class size, gets extra help from a teacher's aide, and uses current textbooks and educational software. He's also learning a second language and taking art and music classes. Ashley lives in Vancouver and might not be so lucky. Every student in Washington State deserves a quality education, regardless of zip code. To lessen the disparity between communities and their ability to pay for education, the state provides levy equalization funds. Communities with low average property values are compensated by the state for the difference. For example, Evergreen School District receives an extra $384 per full-time student, or nearly $14 million a year. Seattle School District receives none. We're the third largest receiver of levy equalization in the state. Levy equalization by itself in our system at, at $14 million, that pencils out to be over 100 teachers. That's three or four or five more kids per classroom is what that amounts to. The state, faced with a $4.6 billion shortfall for 2011 to 13, proposes to make drastic cuts in many state programs, including levy equalization. If schools lose levy equalization funds, the gap between the property rich and property poor school districts will widen, and a larger share of the state's responsibility to pay for its public schools will fall on local communities. Shifting that responsibility to the local taxpayer creates an undue burden to those property owners who can least afford to make up that difference. The state's $4.6 billion budget shortfall is causing our governor and our legislators to make difficult decisions. But they do have options. As our elected leaders tackle the deficit, they can ensure that cuts affecting our children are shared proportionately across the 295 school districts. 
Unfair funding solutions could mean a lifetime of lost opportunities. For more information about school funding and the challenges that face our districts, please contact your local school district.